All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Metal Talk. We are so excited, and I remind you, please hit that subscribe button so that we can bring you more interviews and we can talk to more artists, those artists that you love and you want to hear about, we bring you into their lives only here in Metal Talk. Today, we have a very, very special guest. I'm super excited. I've been waiting to have him for a long time, to be honest with you. I've been a fan for him for a while. He is from Sweden. You might know him from his work with Camelot, Seventh Wonder, Orion. He's an incredible, incredible singer, and he's coming straight to us here in Metal Talk. Tommy Karevic, how are you today, Tommy? Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, an, it's an honor to be on your show. I've seen, seen uh, quite some episodes of yours, so that's cool. Thanks, Tommy. We appreciate that. Thank you so much, uh, Tommy. We've been eager to have you here. Obviously, let's talk about your newest album out there. Obviously, Camelot's I Am The Empire, live at the O13. Just a sick, sick set list. Incredible production that Camelot obviously has us uh, accustomed to. What can you tell us about this latest, latest live album? Did you enjoy making it? Tell us about some of the highlights. Oh, wow. It was, it was a crazy thing. You know, we we kind of kicked off a tour with, with playing, uh, with, with doing this, uh, recording this live DVD. So, so it was, um, you know, usually... Recording a live DVD might be, you know, at the end of a, a tour or something like that. When you're, mm -hmm. all, you know, um, kind of, you know, the machine is going. Uh, you have the songs down to a, to a perfection, and you know exactly what you're doing in all the songs, and you know have a flow. But this was more like kind of the raw energy that was that's always there in the beginning of a of a tour, you know, translated into, to to the screen. And it's kind of like you're you're just eager and you know happy to get out there and do your thing, you know. And whereas you know at the end of the show, at the end of the tour, you're you know you're a little worn down sometimes. But um, this was a fresh fresh thing for the whole band, you know. Just get out there and, and do it. That was really cool. It was full of energy, Tommy. Uh, some of the guests. Uh, I mean, f first of all, the set list was incredible. Some new songs there, some all-time classic Camelot originals. But of course, uh, you know those 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 guests that you had on stage. You had Sasha, great great producer from Avantasia. You had Alisa White Gloss from Arch Enemy. You had Elise Reed from obviously Amaranth. You know, uh, we know that. Camelot has brought some of these personalities together for the stage. How do you feel collaborating with all these uh, different singers on stage? It wasn't it was it a fun experience? Yeah, it's always fun. I mean, uh, we try to look at it also as a celebration of the years, you know, especially the years that I've been in the band, it's almost uh, ten years now. Right. Which is crazy. Right. So, so just this, you know, a celebration of all the, you know, the hits and all the the friends that we had during the years and the, the people that toured with us and. Uh, came on stage with us, uh, uh, so it was just it was a cool thing to kind of close that chapter and just now focus on the future, you know, in a way. And it's always cool; it's, it adds energy, and and I think the fans were happy to see you know, all of the all the people that we collaborated with, basically too. So, so I cool. like I like what you just said, Tommy. Focus on the future, and you are right. 2021 marks nine years since your inception into Camelot and you joining the band. Three studio albums one live album. How do you feel after all this time of uh, almost 10 years? And I have to tell you this, um, coming in and truly, truly replacing someone that we thought was replaceable like Roy Khan. You really brought in your, your style, you brought in your persona, and boom, Camelot was once again refreshed, renewed, and relaunched. How does it feel? That happened 10 years ago, Tommy. Can you believe it? It's it's crazy. I mean, it is really crazy. Uh, it was a crazy time for me because, uh, um, you know, I had some experience being on stage, but not to that extent. And 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 um, you know, Camel is obviously a much bigger band, and and um, I, I was just, uh, you know, it, I never thought about it as I'm going to replace someone. To be honest. I, I thought about it as I, I want to honor the the legacy that was already there, but bring something new to the, you know, into the fold as well. So I, I thought, you know, I thought it as a, as a huge challenge, of course. Um, right. Right. But but my view on it was never I'm going to go in and replace this guy. 
uh, you know, because I know he, he was loved and he is still loved in the metal community and will always be loved because of his talent and uh, what he brought to the table with Conception and, and um, Camelot. So mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I never thought that that was my job to go in and, and replace him. I just wanted to take on, take, take on what he had going for the band, you know, and, and just bring me, you know, like my, my personality, like you said, and my energy and, you know, and, and in many ways it's a different band because it's, you know, you, it's a little bit of a different energy now, you know, but it's still, you know, mm -hmm. people have all these un albums that they can listen to and, and, you know, from, from the beginning and they have new albums and they will continue to have new albums and with, uh, with great songs. So, yeah, that's kind of my take on it. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's uh, it, it it transformed into a a, a tight, amazing band. I really like the second uh, phase. You leading Camelot, uh, I I really really do. And I think the the best uh, I think the best testament to this and that you are so good at what you do fronting Camelot is that the fans feel like they never skipped a beat. It feels like you know, uh, it, the 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 legend of Camelot carries on. And I think that's just fantastic, Tommy. I think that's just great, and it's something to applaud, uh, because us metal fans sometimes a lot we live we live in the past. We like to live in the past, and we're presenting with new things, and we reject them. But uh, from what I've observed on the internet, on mu what I've what I've listened to in music, Tommy was welcomed with open arms into the Camelot family. And we're just so happy that you are here. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> It, it, I have to say, it's not, it's never an easy thing, especially, you know, coming in after someone that was so renowned, you know, and, and um, I, um, I'm just uh, thinking back in hindsight, it, it just like, it couldn't have gone any better, to be honest, like, and I'm so happy That's that the right. fans were so accepting and, and, um, and really welcomed me with open arms. So, so, I mean, I have only positive things to say about that. You know what I, what I actually thought was going to be um, more. I thought it was going to be more stressful mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. I, of what you just said with the with you know the metal community being maybe you know often maybe living in the past a little bit here and there. You know, like you're like I if I think about my, my favorite albums, for example, of my favorite bands, uh, I I also I also live in the past. You know, just, <laughs> let's just be real. You're like I, I glorify some of the stuff in the past, and and I think maybe mm -hmm. ah, it's never going to be the same again. And, uh, and if uh, my band, my favorite band, had to replace a singer, I I don't know what I would do. Like I, so I come from the same thoughts. So that's why I'm so happy that 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 everyone or most of the people were so welcoming. So let's talk about you know about ten years ago. On websites like Blabbermouth and BraveWords.com, that I, you know, we, uh, Metal Talk did not exist yet. But on those websites, you know, we hear Tommy Karavik, singer from Seventh Wonder, joins Camelot. And I think a lot of fans, including myself, rushed YouTube. Who's Seventh Wonder? The first song that I listened to was Alley Cat. I listened to Seventh Wonder. I freaking love it. It's amazing. Seventh Wonder is such a fantastic band. And in case you haven't listened to it, guys, listen to Seventh Wonder. It's a fantastic band. How do you manage both, Tommy? How do you manage both bands? And how did the guys from Seventh Wonder feel when uh, they heard that, you know, the front man was joining Camelot? Well, we had a really, we all, we have a really close relationship still. So, and we're working on stuff all the time, but you know, of course, it. <clears throat> they were really, like, they're my brothers. They, they were really supportive. They still are super supportive. Even though, you know, the being in Camelot, of course, takes a, most of my time. So so I try to be mindful of that, you know, and I try to be there for them when I can. And, and uh, it's, it's just a natural, you know, natural um, order of things. But uh, that being said, you know, it took... What it took eight years for us to release an album. Uh -huh. Once I joined Camelot, uh -huh. so so I mean, it, I'm just happy that the guys are still, you know, supporting me and rooting for me and and uh, understanding that it might take some time, you know. And, and I'm happy for the fans because the fans were all, they were all over our new record and it was like we didn't 
skip a beat, you know. So I don't know how we, we managed to do that, but some, somehow everyone's stuck around and waited for eight years. <laughs> so that, that's pretty, pretty amazing to, to say the least, you know. We, before that, we always tried to release an album like every second year, or every second, third year, you know, which is a lot of work because, you know, making an album takes energy and time. It takes a lot of energy and time. So, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's needless to say, we, we, we don't want to wait eight more years until we release another album. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Tommy, we've seen you in action. Uh, I, I've uh, obviously, you know, being a Seventh Wonder fan, saw you, uh, uh, saw you, uh, uh, you know, different videos that you can find on YouTube, you playing some of the songs, including Alley Cat again. It is my favorite song, my bad. Uh, Great Escape is another one. Um, so we've seen you perform those songs. Obviously, the Seventh Wonder stage is a more relaxed, you know, environment. It's a uh, it's a progressive music. There's probably like one girl in the audience out of a thousand people. Uh, whereas, and when when Camelot, uh, I don't know, you're probably looking at 40, 50 percent female uh, uh, audience because a lot of ladies love Camelot. So, how would you how would you differentiate, and how? Do you uh, fit fit into those very different worlds that you uh, uh, float in between? Where it's like you know progressive music, very laxed, much more on the vein of, of the music and Camelot theatrics, uh, uh, wardrobe. Uh, you're obviously your uh, other members of the band. How do you feel about that? Well, it, it, it's it, it's not the easiest thing, uh, and and it's something I had to learn for sure. Like coming from uh, from Seventh Wonder, going into Camelot, transitioning into Camelot for the first kind of shows. I mean, the first show we played was in front of thirty thousand people with Camelot. So, <laughs> damn, <laughs> bit, you know, and and get myself into the mood and of the music and and practice what I had to, you know, practice what I had to say, how I'm, how I wanted to move. You know, it's a different thing, of course, way more theatrical and way more. Um, a different vibe in the music, right? So, so yeah, that was we had. I think we had four or five days in the rehearsal studio before that first show, just a band, and we went through the set full on twice a day. Uh, so it's like four, I don't know, three, four hours of performing, and then going over notes like what, like it was. It was actually like uh, pretty intense though that, that week where we were there in the in the rehearsal space and. We set up a stage, you know, and and just like practice some stuff because it was a it's a big part of the of the band, you know. Like it has to be interactive, it has to be a certain energy and a vibe, and and um, the guys helped me out in the beginning, you know, like Thomas and Oliver and 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 everyone helped out, you know. This is what we usually do. This is this is how the how it works, and but then really from there, I think just playing a lot of shows and uh, just gradually trying to improve presence and interaction and, and, you know, to the point where I feel, you know, very comfortable right now uh, in the role of, of, of the singer, as the singer of Camelot, because we played, I don't know how many hundreds of shows, but, but now it feels, it feels like my vessel and my, my way of expressing music, you know? So it, it, that's, that's really, um, a big thing, and then then it was hard to go back to Seventh Wonder, of course, because that's a a big difference, you know. Is just going back to kind of whatever feel, you know, like I I just go on and and wear whatever I want for for the day, for example. You know? Yeah. But yeah, yeah it, it, it that being said too, it turned out into it turned into something more uh, more professional uh, in quotations with Seventh Wonder too, because. You know, we we had we wore the same clothes. We wore, we had, we practiced in the rehearsal room exactly. You know, we had some more gimmicks going on, and I think it's just natural. You know, from also from me just being more experienced. You know, so um, yeah, I mean, it's hard. Also, the singing, going back and forth, the sing different singing styles was really right. really challenging. For example, I had. Last the last U.S. tour we did with uh, uh, Camelot. Before that, I flew over to Atlanta with Seventh Wonder, and we played Prog Power. So I had to be up to date with all those songs 
Seventh Wonder songs and the Seventh Wonders way of singing, and then kicking off the Camelot tour. I don't know three days later. So wow. just go in in between, remembering lyrics, which I'm terrible at, and um, <laughs> and I am honestly really bad. At. I have to make sure I have to practice at home because um, if I can, for example, do the dishes or vacuum or something like that when I'm singing the songs, that's that's how I know I'll remember the lyrics but <laughs> so i have to really sing the sing the songs at home you know which is which is really funny it's not my not my forte but um yeah so you know going between those different vocal styles and and performance styles are a little challenging it, it's a little challenging for me i was going to tell you with the lyrics too i mean it has to be so difficult uh, learning lyrics to an eight nine minute song <laughs> and then uh Going back and forth, and uh, I mean, do you ever use like an iPad or something right behind, uh, right by your stand or anything, Tommy? No, right, that's not allowed. <laughs> no, I mean, no, that, that would be awesome sometimes, but but uh, no, I mean, in all fairness, it, it you know, it's the first couple of shows you feel a little uncertain, but then then once you have once you have your confidence, and once you you know how the everything is going to work on stage, and everyone is in their mojo. Yeah, it's never a problem. It's just it's more more a mind game, you know, because I know I'm bad at it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. Let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you about your relationship with Thomas. Uh, Thomas Youngblood to me is a very interesting character because a person uh, because obviously uh, he is American. He lives in Florida. Uh, there's uh, very few power metal bands uh, that are from the United States originally. Uh, how and I. And I'm guessing you covered some of this in our last in our last uh, question, but how does it feel to work? How is the working, um, I guess, uh, um, the working style of an American band such as and led by Thomas, you know, versus a European band? Is it aligned with the same style? Is Thomas much more professional? I see that he's always followed uh, 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 a professional process when carrying his band. How do you feel about that? Like. Do you see a vast difference when working with an American uh, 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 band leader, perhaps? Not really. I mean, Thomas is very professional, like you said. He he's uh, focused on you know uh, he's focused on the fans and and the you know bringing the the fans the best version of Camelot they can ever get, and also uh, you know an entrepreneur in the in the in the sense that he's always looking for new things you know new experiences new you know developing the band forward not only looking backwards basically not ever looking backwards which Correct. is uh, yeah which is uh i think that's a very positive thing and something that i don't think is either north american or or european i think it's just a you know a, a sign of a of a good leader you know like a good you know he's also a visionary like he has he has the strong vision for for what he wants Camelot to be, and and he communicates it, you know. I've always so, wanted to ask him, Tommy. Sorry to interrupt you. I've always wanted to ask him. Talking about vision, how did he find you? Um, well, it, it was that uh, weird, situ uh, weird situation with uh, with the previous singer. Then that uh, they they were going to kick off their uh, 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 North American tour in 2010. In uh, uh -huh. Atlanta, in Prague Power, and we just happened to be in Prague Power too with Seventh Wonder. You know, same day but uh, lower on the bill. So when he found out that that uh, you know we, we don't have a singer to, to tour <laughs> this, you know, because Roy uh, he, uh, he quit left. the band. Yeah. Right. So um, so I think you know the original vision was to try to find someone quick and do the tour because as you know it's 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 just a crazy commitment doing a tour it's so much money and it's so much money lost if you don't do the tour and absolutely and so many so many uh, disappointed people you know that bought tickets so he was going to try to you know try to make that happen somehow and so i think he called called around to uh, a few singers that he knew was going to be in the uh, on the festival, 
uh, and he called me and, and I asked me if I could uh, help him out and I said I can learn one or two songs and that's what I did. Um, but the singer that, that sang most of the songs were uh, Michael Erickson from from uh, Circus Maximus. Uh, oh, in that yeah. show in, in, in the Atlanta show? Yeah, in that show. So he helped, he, he um, flew over just for that show. But um, oh, wow. yeah, but I, I helped him out, you know, singing one song, which I think it was Eden Echo. Okay. And uh, yeah, because it was like four, it was four days before the sh before I flew over, you know, some of that. And I, I wasn't really familiar with all the songs. So I said, there's no way I can. And I had a bad cold, of course, as all singers do. <laughs> right. So couldn't even practice or anything. So I would say, I learned the song in my head, you know, and then I just, I never sang it before. I, I, I went on stage with, uh, with Kendall that night. So, so that's kind of how it started. And then, then we, um, then we just uh, kept in contact I think for almost one and a half years, one year, you know, until until everything was settled that I was going to be the new singer, and uh, yeah, so it was it was kind of a crazy crazy deal, and I, I don't envy the situation the band was in back then, you know, having a tour planned and everything like that, but shit happens. Right. And like all good stories, you know, they have a crazy beginning. What a crazy beginning. I, I did not know that it would it resulted like this. I mean, uh, uh, you could you could have get you could have to completely guessed that it was a careful thought and consideration because it truly was. But to have found each other there at Proc Power USA in Orlando is just fantastic and such a, a staple of a of a of a festival as well. Right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. We've been there for. I don't know how many times now. Three times with Seventh Wonder, I think. Oh well, yeah, I have to think. Uh, doesn't ten, fourteen? Yeah, three times. So uh, three times. So that, wow. Yeah, and it's just great people working there, and and Glenn that has the festival has always been a, a really nice to work with and uh, support it. So that's that's awesome actually, and uh, uh, hope, hopefully. We get to go back there, you know. I played with some yeah. with the uh, Pablo too there actually. Played um, can't remember the year now, but it's just a fantastic festival that you have to go if you're living in the United States, definitely. Um, so Tommy, I wanted to tell you, uh, we're we're covering so much of your career. You know, we're talking about so many bands that you've worked with. Uh, obviously, Orion. That's another one that you work with. Uh, uh, it's insane, Tommy. How in the last years, I want to say, what, five, six, seven years, your career has exploded into what it currently is. And you're obviously, you know, being featured in this. You are now, uh, you're playing the the, the 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 main role, really, in, in, in Orion's Transitus album, which is Daniel, which is a, a very important role in the album. Uh, again, uh, I, I think anything that Arjun uh, does is just, uh, you know, dressed with gold. Uh, it's fantastic music. How do you feel about it? Obviously, we know that uh, a lot of these uh, projects are, uh, you know, sending in tapes and, uh, you know, that stuff, that kind of work. But how did you feel about being a part of this project as well? I mean, that was that was kind of a, a little bit of a dream, you know, when he approached me the first time. Because, of course, I knew his work and I knew that he reaches out to singers that he that he enjoys and that he thinks right. can right. can. Um, Bring something to his, you know, a, a new vibe or flavor to his album. So I was, I was really, really happy when he, when he um, uh, approached me, of course, and I said yes without hesitation. Then after, and that was the theory of everything. Uh, I think it was uh -huh. 2013. Right. And since I've done two more, I did um, the Source. I think that came out in 2017. Source. Yeah. Around there, and, um, yeah. Transit this like I ha that I have right here behind here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Very nice. A little, little note, a little thank you note from Aryan. Um, so and I was a part of the live DVD too, right? Like the um, that we recorded in in uh, 2017. So yeah, it's been a lot. I mean, been a lot of uh, fun. Uh, thanks to Aryan. I mean, for inviting me and and. You know, honestly, he's just a, he's just a really nice guy, and I enjoyed working with him the first time. 
And this, so I was down at his studio the first time uh, recording the vocal parts for, for the first album, but then I didn't have time to go go down because of my busy schedule. I couldn't go down to him and record um, right. for the source. So, but then he, uh, he let me record everything uh, in my own studio. As for the last one, I also recorded everything because yeah, it's just hard, it's just hard to to fly around all the time. We do a lot of the flying as it is, and and I'm very comfortable working working in my own studio with um, everything. Like I, I have always worked in my own studio when it comes to Seventh Wonder, and now I work a lot uh, from from here too when uh, uh, talking about countless stuff. So so it's just it's just a uh, you know it's just how I prefer to work anyway. Right, it's uh, the blessings of technology, right, Tommy? And how uh, we can actually uh, uh, produce an album even without being in the same room as it was in the past. You know, uh, I, I think us fans, we're lucky that we have uh, that now because obviously we get more music out of the bands that we love, which is fantastic. So uh, that that is great. We've spoken so much about your musical life. Uh, talk to us about your personal life, Tommy. You know, you're very, you're living in Canada. You're, uh, you're, uh, you recently got married, which is fantastic. Congratulations! What Thank in you. the world are you doing uh, to endure COVID? I mean, I know it's a terrible disease that has kept us indoors. Um, what are you doing? And obviously, you're a fitness guy. Uh, how do you maintain uh, your fitness while Staying indoors and not being able to go to the gym. What do you do to survive, Tommy? I'm a fitness guy too. I try to be not as good as you, obviously, but we're nice. there. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, you're there for sure. I mean, uh, yeah, it's been a crazy year. I mean, for everyone, I think. But for for me, um, I um, quit firefighting, um, moved to Canada Why? after. <laughs> that was a little too. Uh, too much time on the plane to go every every day back. Oh. <laughs> no. But uh, no, it was just uh, it was just time for me to to start focusing all, all my energy on the music because last at least ten years I've been a firefighter for twenty years almost but at the last ten years were were really was a lot of work because I worked full time as a firefighter and I worked I was doing all these albums. Uh, uh, vacations and nights and and um, you know it could be like coming home from work and then there was a deadline for a song and I had to make a song for you know right after coming home from working 10 hours and then um, I uh, spent the whole night recording it and then in the morning I went to work again without sleeping like st stuff like that and sleeping in the right. studio right. on my vacation and just uh, it, it was just too much, you know, and then, then flying back and forth um, across the world a million times uh, with jet lag and then going back to work and then yeah, so it it was just uh, it's getting out of control and I was I was really getting tired, you know, uh, and also didn't feel so inspired to do anything because I was just tapped, but but then I think this year really really uh, put everything in perspective. I, I, I took, I carved some time out for myself, you know, to, to get healthier and get, uh, um, you know, more energy and, and uh, more inspiration, and, you know. So, so for me, you know, moving here to Canada, COVID of course hit, but nothing really changed except for that. We had more time to think and, and value the stuff that we uh, want in our life instead of what we have to have in our lives. Slow down a little bit. So um, that was really nice. I mean, and, and also I managed to get here before COVID hit. So, so that me and, and uh, my, uh, my wife nowadays, Cobra Page, we could, we could see each other every day, which was not the case. Uh, before and we saw each other a couple of times a year and, and very short because we had so many things to do you know we had and we didn't live in the right. same country so now you know we live on the same roof and, and we see each other every day and it's absolutely wonderful um and now i can't think of a life where, where we're not having it like this so uh, for me it has been it has been of course sad to see the world fall apart but it, it's been a good year personally fantastic tommy we see you happy we obviously follow you and your socials uh 
just earlier today, we saw how uh, they made you a, into a mini uh, with her, which is fantastic. Uh, shout out to uh, Oscar. He's a big friend of mine. So, uh, F- uh, F- Fetru. Yeah, it's a big friend of mine. So, uh, well, yeah. He's a talented guy. I laughed my ass off when I woke up and saw that. I was like, this is fun. <laughs> I want more of this in my life. <laughs> 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 he's a big fan of yours as well uh we were talking when i told him about that we were having this interview uh he got very excited and he uh he uh he said you know what i'm gonna make him a mini because uh he a lot, he does a lot of uh players uh sports players around the world uh and uh, uh he definitely said how he was gonna make one of you because he's such a big fan so uh we see you happy tommy we're very very happy for you that um you know, uh, you've you've uh, you've achieved so much, especially when you see a musician that obviously, again, uh, uh, being liking Seventh Wonder when I first listened to it, and this being so many years ago and seeing your career flourish and grow is just fantastic. You know, it's a uh, it's a great uh, it's it's a great thing to see and a great thing to uh, live. And we're just very thankful for all the music that you do, uh, Tommy. Uh, what if you could give a message uh, to your fellow musicians? First of all. Your fellow musicians uh, during these difficult times, uh, what would it be? Yeah, it would be don't lose hope, don't give up, and and but don't stress. There's nothing nothing good comes from stress. I mean, I feel everyone and everyone's you know anguish a little bit, and this, especially musicians because of how little we can do. You know, we're we're, we're living from the touring. Uh, business especially nowadays you know and that that's where the main income comes so right. so i know it's tough right. but we'll get through this and uh, uh like like everything nothing bad lasts everything goes in waves right so it's just it was a little longer wave than we thought but yeah. we'll get back out there and uh we'll we'll have some fun you know awesome tommy uh let me let me ask you something else um Obviously, uh, we we've uh, we've known that recently there's been a lot of activity in your career, but we want to know what's next. What can we expect us fans of Seventh Wonder, Camelot, and Tommy in general? What can we expect? What, what can your fans expect upcoming in your career? Uh, it's it's uh, an exciting time actually because we have a lot of uh, music written for the next Camelot album, and I think we all agree it's it feels feels exactly where we want to be. You know, so you know we had some some more time to work on it, which is never bad, right? right. So right. so that um, that feels really exciting personally. And um, when when that is all wrapped up, uh, there's a new Seventh Wonder uh, album in the in the making as well. Um, and uh, after that, I mean, or similar, like um, uh, at the same time. I have some old, my own stuff too that uh, that I'm working on. So, so nothing concrete yet, but you know, stay tuned for for some news regarding my own stuff as well. Like maybe maybe um, uh, a little solo thing coming out at some point. Yes, but, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Would love to but, hear that, Tommy. Very cool to uh, to finally. I know it's been a long time coming too. So. Um, so that that's fun, but then I also have uh, me and Cobra has something really exciting to share very soon too that uh, we want to we want to do, and it's not not uh, music related, it's uh, fitness related. So so um, keep your keep your eyes peeled. I thought you were gonna tell us that you're gonna have a baby, Tommy. I thought you were gonna tell us you're gonna become a father. We're gonna have a little fitness baby. <laughs> Tommy, I gotta ask you something, my friend, before this interview concludes, because um, I must ask you, how much do you bench? Oh my God! Oh, I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta take my calculator. Let's see. I don't, I'm, oh, I'm you not, have to add it up. Uh, no, I just know what I what I did bench when I was like twenty six. Oh, okay. I don't know what I do. You know, like you said, that your question, I actually didn't really answer it before. Um, your question about how do we, you know, stay fit during this yeah. crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been, I've never ta- taken this time, this long time off from going to the, an actual gym, right? So I always went to the gym religiously. Uh, 
even when I was working as a firefighter, there's a gym there, and I had, you know, membership to the local gym. But this year hasn't been like that. I think I've been to the gym like ten times maybe in a year. Uh, so, but, but that being said, that being going to the gym is not the same thing as not as working out. You know, you can work out at home, right? So, we have been uh, actually doing a lot of hit workouts. If you know what hit hit work, yeah, absolutely. Like functional. Yeah, so we, we're doing that basically every day. So, um, and you only need like thirty minutes, right? You, because and then you're exhausted because it's it's all about functionality. It's gives you strength, it gives you flexibility, uh, and it's all about the heart rate always being up. So um, that's what we do, and uh, and then I try to just like uh, do some complementary training with uh, with like two sets of dumbbells that I have at home. Right, but that's, right. That's you know, and then I run the stairs. We have we're, we're living in a in a condo building, uh, so I run up and down down the stairs, uh, and and that's working great to be honest. And I, I don't really miss the gym a ton. Uh, I I I gotta ask you, how is it that you do hit workouts and keep those huge arms, dude? How do you do it? Because they're 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 humongous, man. And with uh, I mean, I used to do CrossFit. I lost my arms when I started doing CrossFit because you got to do a lot more focus stuff, right? Like you said, is that where is that how you, when you do use the dumbbells you focus a lot on uh, bicep work? Uh, it's just I don't know. It, it everyone has like something that grows more than, than other stuff too, right? Like right. For me, it was always like my dad has big arms, like and and, and I, I did a ton of work on my arms when I was lifting a lot, but I don't focus on it anymore they, they they just get in there with everything else you know right. um, so i try to be more functional nowadays instead of just doing bicep curls all, all the time or, or doing bench presses or like i try to be more functional i think about the future and i think about you know for me being strong was all, always important and right now being strong for me is being able to pick something heavy up and be like be the dad strong you know, where you can pick something up and just walk forever. That's right. That's you know, right. instead of instead of being like, you know, I I, I uh, just want to look good or anything like that. Like for me now, functionality is is, is way more appealing in my workouts. Right. So right. That hit workouts just work out. They work so well for that. You know, you you get conditioned, you get strong and flexible, and 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 yeah. It doesn't take a, a whole bunch of time. So from what I'm gathering, Tommy, it seems like you and Cobra are putting together some uh, workouts, uh, and I can't wait to do it myself, man. Is that what it is? <laughs> well, I can't tell, but it sounds, sounds in, uh, intriguing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would definitely follow your workouts, man, let me tell you. Uh, Tommy, thank you so much for such an incredible metal talk that turned into health talk into muscle talk. I mean, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. I hope you enjoyed it yourself. Um, yeah, so and thank you so me. much. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool to get out there and talk a little bit about these things too, because, um, because of the news that comes, that's going to come follow shortly, you know, with me and Cobra, for example, this is, this is a perfect thing to just like to air it out a little bit before, you know? And, uh, <laughs> And yeah, so thank you so much for, for having me. It was, an, it was a pleasure. It was our pleasure. Thank you so much. Again, fans, subscribe and thank you for watching our interview. Thank you. Keep on rocking, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.